Hello, good day. My name is Amiel Spencer, and today I'll be showing you how to connect WAM Server to Microsoft Access 2013. So I'm going to assume that you already have WAM Server already installed on your computer. So let's go to go to the taskbar, and as you can see, this is our icon for WAM Server. It's green, indicating that it's often it's connected. Gonna left click and we're going to select PHP My Admin page, which is going to take us to the home page of Wam Server. Right, this is our home page, and as you can see to the left here, these are all the databases that are already created in Wam Server. But we're going to create a new one. So, what I would like you to do is select new, and here we're going to name our new database. So that's going to name it students, leave that as is and select create and as you can see here our database students have been created and if you look to the left here is the database that we just created. So if you select that we're going to create a new table. So we're going to enter in a name for our table so we can just name it people and we're going to put four columns these columns will be associated with each field that would be within the table so I'm going to go with four and click go right once you click go it will take you to this page and from here you're going to name and set the type of each column so first now this is a note we're going to create a unique identifier in this case as I'm doing students I'm going to do a student ID number now this is needed for later on when it is you're going into access when you're going to access and you're connecting access to WAM server you will need it will ask you for a unique identifier now this identifier has to be unique to each person in the database so each thing or so forth so and it only would recognize at least an integer or a virtual type not a text so when it goes to that id i'm going to put that at virtual and length of three now i'm going to go with first name put that as text and set it to a length of 20, same for last name and we'll just put each we'll leave that as integer and set that to a length of 2 once you fill in and name all your columns let's click save as you can see here this is our new table people within our database students that we have just created now i want to go and enter in some information so when it is we go into access we'll be able to pull that information and see it from within access so we're going to go and select insert you could select either one i'm going to enter in some information so as we just created before student id we're going to enter in the student id first a name why you can hold not why can hold and 23 now you can just enter one you can just click go and that information will be stored but I want to enter more than one so go to enter the next person and 24. Once you enter in all your information, come down to the bottom of the page and click go. And if you want to view the information as it just entered, you could select worlds. And as you can see here, these are the two students that we have just entered. And as you can see, we have a unique identifier, student ID, for each of these students. Because no one person can have the same, no two persons can have the same student ID so now we're going to go into access so 
Now when it is your starting access, you have to start it administrative administrator mode and I'll show you when it is which there why we have to. So start it in administrative mode. Okay, yes. And we're going to create a new database. So blank desktop database. Right. We just create a new database in Access. So now we're going to connect Access to one server. So you're going to go select the term external data and we're going to select ODBC database. This window will open and we're going to select the second option link to the data source by creating a link table. Once you have it selected, click OK. This window will open. We're going to go to the second tab, Machine Data Source, and we're going to select New. Now, the reason why it is I uh, told you to open Access in Administrative Mode, if you didn't open it in Administrative Mode, this second option, System Data Source, would not be available to you. Only use a data source. And for this instance, we need to use, we need the availability of System Data Source. That's the reason why you have to start access in administrative mode. So once you've done that, select System Data Source and click Next. And as you can see here, it will show us all the available drivers for connecting to a database. In this case, we'll be selecting the MySQL ODBC 5.3 driver. Now the version will vary according to which one you download, but this is basically the driver you'll be using to connect to one server. Once you have that selected, click Next, click Finish, and this window will open up. Now this is just to enter in some information, so first you're going to name the database. You can name this anything, in this case I'm naming this anything. You don't have to put a description, but you can if you want to, that's for further information. Now the information, the fields that you have to make sure and enter properly is the user, which in case for user you'll be typing in root, no password, unless you set a password within one server. In this case I leave that default so there's no password. And for database you're going to Click the drop down arrow and you're going to look for the database that you just created. In this case, it will be students. It will automatically pull all the databases from our server. You can select test to make sure that connection is working properly. Click OK. And click OK. Click OK again. And this window will open up. You're going to select the table that you created within students in one server. So you're going to select people, you can have multiple tables, you're going to select people, like for instance you can have, like if you're in an organization, the HR department, the tech, the IT department, and so forth. So, you can have different tables for different sections of your organization, but in this case I only have one, so select people, click OK. And we're going to select the unique identifier. As I said before, you need a unique identifier that will pinpoint to a specific person that no other person would have. And in this case, I have it done as a student ID. No two persons will have the same user ID. So you select that. If you select like the first name or last name, it will give you an error. You need a unique identifier. So most likely, I have to be at least like a voucher type or age, but it's more better to use the student ID because that is unique. Anybody could be 25. Everybody could be 25. So select student ID, click OK. And as you can see here, to our left, the table from within WAMP, WAMP server that we created has appeared here. If you double click it, you will see the information that was within WAMP server appear here. Now, we're going to try something. We're going to add some new data to this table. Also, with the unique ID, 
this helps because if it is you did select the first name or last name you would only be able to view the table you will not be able to edit it or add any more information to it so like for instance I could change the age of one of the students to 25 I could add a new student age 21 and we're going to click save and if we go back to one server and just reload the page we'll be able to see that newly entered information that we entered within access so from access I enter new information and one server was able to pull that information and add it to my table and we could also do the same way it is we could just simply again insert some new information so I could add a new student one two six click go okay, click browse and we just enter that information as you can see we could go back to access if we go to home and refresh as you can see the information that we just entered within one server has appeared within access so you could be able to add and add information from one server and access and have that information be shown between each other with no problem so thank you very much for watching my tutorial of how to connect one server to Microsoft Access 2013